Mr. Montana. Bye bye, the nation. Bye bye, out. Take no humba. Chiba. The Mardi Gras Indians are not just another entertainment element of the carnival season. Their colorful hand sewed costume that take a whole year to make and their tribal dances performed to challenge the opposing tribes are the symbol of the New Orleans black folk culture that dates back a hundred years. Most of the black New Orleans Indians claim they started dressing like the Native Americans as a tribute for their help with the renegade Senegalese brothers once they settled in the Mississippi Delta in the 1700s. Others believe that the costume of dressing up like Plains Indians has to be attributed to the Wild West shows featuring Buffalo Bill in the 1800s. The black Indians identify with the character in the show and wanted to improvise their own. Whether one story or both are indeed true, Congo Square, today known as Louis Armstrong Park, is where it all began. There, the African slave would gather in their free times to sell their products and socialize. African dances and today's jazz music were born in those Sunday gatherings. Nobody really knows how many are the Mardi Gras Indians in New Orleans, since theirs is a, such a renegade tradition. A fair estimate counts anywhere between 20 to 40 tribes of Mardi Gras Indians, each of which has between 4 to 15 members. Their main difference is the way they saw their suits. Downtown Mardi Gras Indians, such as the Yellow Pocahontas and the Payayay, are known for their three-dimensional designs, while the uptown black Indians, like the Fayo and the Golden Eagles, are known for having intricate, one-dimensional fighting scenes sawed on their costumes. It was the big chief of the Yellow Pocahontas, Tutti Montana, who made masking an art in the 20th century. He was the one who convinced the 1900 black Indians to stop wearing chicken feathers and use ostriches instead. He also pushed them to start drawing and sawing their own designs on their suits. weigh over 100 pounds and their making takes 365 days for a total cost of $6,000, not to mention manual labor. To top it all out, the suits are only worn three times a year, on St. Joseph night, during the uptown and downtown Super Sunday parades, and on Mardi Gras day. Although Tootie Montana tried to make masking all about the suits and not about tribal rivalry, the 19th century phenomenon continues to exist, and heated fights still happens between black Indians when they meet today. Tribal pride is among one of the first reasons behind confrontations. Some black Indians like to challenge one another performing native dances to show off their suits and pride themselves with the hard handiwork put onto the sawing of their masks. Those fights often end up with a friendly hug and a soulful love. Other times, diversity brings upon spiteful insults about one another's suits or tribal lineage. Those fights often have past reasons to become serious riots in which sometimes someone gets brutally hurt. Nigga, I got enough tins on to make your whole crop. I got tins, nigga. I got that shit old. You wore that last shit, my nigga. You showing that shit? That shit old. Who's that is? That's old too. Boy, you a motherfucker. That's old too. You wore that in black. Fuck a lot, you man. You wore that in black. You a coochie man. Coochie man. Coochie man. The 
Despite what could indeed happen, every year a couple of hundred people flood New Orleans Black Street to see Mardi Gras Indians dancing at the beat of drums and percussion of all kinds. There are people who have been here before and some who come out for the first time like the veteran daughter and the visiting mother who joined in behind the yellow Pocahontas and did not leave their sight for the rest of the march. Because what's best than being in a parade, it is being the parade. Is this your first parade? Yeah. How many have you done? This is my third. Indian? Yeah. You like? I love God. I mean, what, what's more new? show to their ancestors by getting dressed all together prior to the big feast. Although this process may take hours, it's part of the tradition. And the lives of the black Indians who have passed are remembered through the masking rituals and the passing of such tradition to their kids. Historically, the two spy boys would lead the way in the front to take care of scouting for the enemy. Their suit would be lighter because they might have to run to catch up with the other tribe. The big chief, or the king, and his queen would follow right behind them and show all their tribal pride with their more elaborate costumes. The flag boy would stay near the king to hold his flag, and the musician would line behind the group while playing to accompany the tribal cries. Queen and Nation, baby. Come out of the park. Queen and Nation. Yeah. Oh my God. Make no more. Make no more. Queen in front, Queen in back. My chief pretty on the side, too. Yes, sir. It's my, it's my favorite pose for Queen. It's even reminds me of emotion. Like I'm getting ready to take off. That's why I like it. I like that. Pretty, pretty queen. Pretty, pretty, take a chief. Take a chief for the nation, yo. tribes would do just the same until sunset rolls over and it's the beginning of a new sewing season for next year's new suits. Thank you. 